right, start the race slow so you can finish fast. Always be mindful of that. Unfortunately for this race, it didn't start off that way. Uh, we're out in Westlake Village, which is uh, just south, uh, I should say north, I'm sorry, north of uh, Los Angeles. Uh, really nice area, uh, Westlake Village. Uh, this is the Barry Wolf Grand Prix. So what you see right now on your screen is exactly what the race has been like for the last uh, 45 minutes. I decided only to record, um, I should say the last hour, I only decided to record uh, the last five laps, which we are coming into the last five laps right now. This is a, a straightaway, which is just a block headwind. It's been a headwind the entire day. Um, my team, Methods to Winning, we actually did the Masters race uh, an hour before this race. Um, so this is our second race of the day, and I was very, very proud of how uh, the team rode. Uh, we also have out there our academy team uh, who represent the Bahati Foundation. Um, you will see them pop into the frame. Uh, they absolutely raced very, very well. Uh, and I was very, very proud of them. So uh, this was kind of funny to me. Uh, a gap opened up. Guys were just getting a little tired. 75 minute race. They're not used to racing 75 minutes for some reason. And uh, instead of just like sprinting across, I just used the entire corner to keep pedaling while the other group is coasting. Uh, one junior racer uh, was able to stay on my wheel as I uh, navigated that corner. It only took me an extra five, six seconds and I was back on the wheel. And I noticed that when gaps open like that, people just like get out of the saddle and do a full on sprint. And it's not necessary. Um, I could see if like six people in front of you were all out of the saddle sprinting. I could clearly see that they were setting the tempo. Um, so I'm always mindful of just like uh, conserving, you know, just making sure every little bit that I can save, I'm going to save it. Even now, you know, instead of putting a lot of pressure on the pedals, I'm just finding my sweet spot. So I, I keep a little bit of pressure on the pedals where I get to the point where the field is going the speed that I'm comfortable with. That's why I slide in. Now, of course, you can't do that all the time. Um, there's times where you definitely have to get on the gas, uh, but that wasn't one of them. So again, look, single foul. Uh, this back section was really fun because just as we have a headwind on the front side, we had a crazy tailwind back there. So we were going pretty fast. If you look at my rear camera, you can see that's one of my guys from the academy team, uh, Cesar Reyes. Uh, he's probably our best bet for a sprint finish. Um, but I also... When we're racing together, I, I want them to race as a team and learn how to be uh, teammates and figure it out on their own without having um, myself or other guys on the Masters team. So here we are again, block headwind on this straightaway. One group comes back, another group goes. Um, and it's, that was pretty much the, uh, the scenario, the entire race. So uh, let me bring you up to speed. There was a group of like eight, eight riders off the front. From that eight, uh, I think a preem happened, like a fifty or hundred dollar preem. And after the preem, there was a counterattack by Wildlife, and he is now solo. And so uh, we had two guys in the break: uh, Mike Easter and Sharon Smith. And um, good scenario for us. I mean, numbers are good. Two fast guys. Uh, Easter loves doing the hard, dirty work, so. Sharon could uh, save all of his energy for the sprint and give him, give him his best chances to win the sprint out of the group. Uh, but you just had a guy in there that was just much better and much stronger than everyone else, and he literally just rolled away from us, uh, I should say from them. Uh, so once, once they all got back, uh, we had to reshuffle. You know, We're not going to catch this guy. Uh, um, you saw Sharon just go flying by, and now it's all about what can we do to get on the podium. So... We're all right now for uh, second place. You know, we're not going to catch. We're not going to catch wildlife. Uh, wildlife is living a wild life. He's up there. I think he went from 15 seconds to 20 seconds to 25 seconds. I think by the end of it, he was like at 40 seconds. So uh, hats off to him for being such a, a strong rider and doing it the hard way. Um, that's rare. You know, it's rare that one rider can get away uh, from a group of 80 riders. And I would say, I mean, the group was pretty motivated trying to chase him. I mean, I mean, we're going 32 miles an hour here, and on the on the front side, we're going, you know, 28. So he was definitely throwing down some watts. Um, 
So, again, people are getting tired, you know. You see you're sitting third, fourth wheel, and people are pulling out. It's like, really? You just got to hold on, you know. Uh, this is a flat course, so uh, you just got to learn how to dig deep. Um, but I've been there, so I'm not talking shit about them. I just, you know, you got to dig deep so you can get better. And uh, I've come a long way uh, over the last couple months. You know, you, you think about it, I haven't really raced in two years. Um, I did Race Across America last year. I did a local crit, um, which I'm going to take credit for uh, Into the Lions then because that was the name of my video. Uh, you can see that on YouTube. And then I did one race in Indy uh, when I was out there for the Major Taylor uh, mural. Um, that was a lot of fun. So, yeah, two crits and Race Across America. And then before that, I didn't do anything. Um, so, you know, I've come a long way. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with my progression right now. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. So when you're putting in all that, all that work and all that work and, like, you don't see it, you don't see it, you don't see it, and then all of a sudden you see it, you feel it. Uh, it's a good feeling. So uh, definitely a confidence booster. Um, as we get closer to the biggest race of the season for me thus far, which would be Tulsa Tough. Um, so there's Mike Easter on my, on my team. He was in a group that was kind of dangling off the front. And just like I said earlier, one group comes, another one goes. And just like true Mike Easter fashion, he's willing to give it his all. So he's back on the front, just uh, trying to get the boys to come back together, weld things together. Um, because at this point, we've been literally going full noise uh, the, the entire race, and um, it wasn't a lot of uh, you know waiting around. People, people actually raced, and I was I was really excited about that. Um, so we're getting down to the end. Um, you can see uh, the closer for Miami Blazers, Dante Young, in my rear camera. Uh, he's uh, I think you know I'm not going to toot myself on the horn, and but. You know, I think when you when you get in events in, in crit races where there's a lot of tactics and stuff like that, and I think it's okay to follow follow the people that know what they're doing. I may not be the fastest one out there, but I tell you this, I I'll, I'll, I'll be the best one positioned um, to to have an opportunity to sprint. So if like if 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 the roles were reversed, I would follow me too. Seriously. Um, fast or not at least I'll, I'll i'll put myself in a position to at least try to win and i always say um put yourself in a position to win first that's the first thing you have to do so right here you see i could have followed austin carroll who was in the yellow but this big guy number 22 wanted to slide in i'm not gonna fight him he's much bigger than me much better draft this is a headwind so like every little single thing that i do i always try to make it meaningful i'm not just doing things to do it um so I purposely let that guy in front of me so I can get a better draft. Save what? Save, which what? Saves energy. Um, and you also notice as the group was coming back, I didn't wait. I went around. Like I always teach my, I try to teach my guys that. Like Steve Brown off to the left. Steve, keep moving. Keep moving. Stop. You can't be stagnant. Keep moving. Keep moving. And that's the way I race unless I'm like shotgunning, which I do a lot of shotgunning uh, in some of these races, especially early early on uh, where everyone's excited and everyone's got a lot of energy and breakaways hardly ever go early um, I mean it happens and that's part of part of racing it's a gamble so I'm always trying to use my momentum stay off the brakes and uh, I this was a super proud moment for me so you saw all three of my guys from the Bahati Foundation getting to the front lining it up like racing that's that's all I want from them is to race and uh, number 10 right there, that's Omar. Uh, he rode out of his mind. He's got some good form right now. Um, I can't wait to these guys really get it together. So, uh, he, you know, either him or, or Caesar can, can be delivered to the line. Um, so <laughs> I was a little upset with this guy just to the right of me. He's like, chopped me for no reason, but uh, it's bike racing, whatever. Um, so, this is where things get a little hairy. Uh, I was talking to Sharon. I said, hey, how you feel? He said his legs were a little tight. So I told him I felt good. So I was expecting uh, the roles would reverse and have him lead me out. Um, and maybe, you know, it was lost in translation somehow. Um, but I had the five lap fever. Like I was, I was actually feeling pretty good given it was my second race. Um, so Chris Hildreth right there in front of me, I call it the jailhouse kit. Um, 
he's coming off some illness, but still a very, very strong rider. And uh, that guy yeah, had tried to chop me again, so I gave him a little pop right there just to let him know I was there. And follow number 72, that's my teammate. Once I pass him, look at my rear view mirror. I mean, my rear view camera. I went right, he went to the wrong side, and this is what happens. Over the handlebars, broken collarbone. That was such a sad moment. This was one to go. Like, the race was on, one to go, and we had this unfortunate crash. I'm not going to call out the person who I, I don't even say I think caused it. I did my own investigation with all the videos that are out there and I know who caused it and it's very unfortunate it was uncalled for um, and a lot of people got hurt and you know one of my guys uh, two of my guys crashed and one broke a collarbone so uh, that's Velo Sport right there in the pink uh, throwing up the hand and this is the junior team y'all remember that juniors they're on junior gears and they are absolutely crushing it. they're on the front uh, I think they raced a better race than the majority of the teams out there. Uh, they literally raced as a team, and I think uh, this this older generation can learn something from these from these kids right here. And even though you know we're going 30 miles an hour left, they're still trying. Look at this. Look at number 19. He's got his he's got his teammate on his wheel. His his sprinter. I think that's Paul. That's Paul Chi's son, who who just moved over from BMX. Look, and he's got his guy straight to the front. He's like, bro, I did my job. Now the mistake he made. It was hard for him to get in somewhere, so he was forced to continue to ride to the front. And now they're way too far forward. So I'm still thinking I'm in good shape, man. I, I, I have confidence in myself that I could uh, beat Dante to the line for, for second place. And um, this is not too far back. Just to the right, that's Danny Finner. We're actually in his neighborhood. Uh, so, of course, he's going to be excited to race. Uh, we're in his hometown. So I like the move he made right here. And Dante made an even better move, but it was a little bit too late. Uh, Danny had the had the momentum, um, and then here's the mistake I made in the sprint. I was loaded up right here. I was like in my 53.11, and I should have just went. It's a long way to go, but and I didn't. And I but I still thought I had the energy and the power. And once uh, Sharon and Dante really got on the speed, I didn't do much. I just uh, sprinted to the line as hard as I could. I I was happy with what I did. 39 miles an hour, just at under 1300 watts. It was a good day. Got on the podium, two guys. We won the pro, uh, Masters race, so good stuff. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.